Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you that are new here, I'm Becca. I'm a professional pet portrait and wildlife artist specialising in realistic coloured pencil drawings of animals. So I feel like it's been literally ages since I've done a start to finish tutorial just for YouTube. My main teaching channel is over on Patreon where you'll get access to over two years worth of in-depth tutorials, art business tips, focus tutorials, materials, videos, literally you name it, everything is on there. Um, so if you are interested in joining my Patreon, there's currently a seven day free trial on there. Um, so you can join for seven days for free and just see if you like it, see if you like my teaching style, you know, really delve into all of my tutorials and, and see what I've got on there. So I have left the link to my Patreon in the description below if you're interested. But for this tutorial for YouTube, I'm going to be focusing on a badger. So I've been kind of umming and ahhing on what to do for the next tutorial. Obviously, my last one a few months ago was a spaniel. Um, so I thought instead of doing a dog, I will do more of like a British wildlife piece. So yeah, I've been wanting to do a badger for quite a while. And if black fur or white fur is something that you particularly struggle with, um, especially like white fur on white paper, then this tutorial is definitely going to be for you because it gives you practice on both really. So before we get started, I've also left the line drawing, the full materials list and the reference photo all in the video description below so you can follow through um, as I'm talking through what I'm doing. So I've drawn the initial outline on 11 by 11 inches on extra white hot pressed Fabriano Artistico paper and what I'm going to do first is actually use pan pastels just to kind of block in that colour and use them as a bit of a base layer. Now I don't often use pan pastels, I only use them sometimes depending on like what animal I'm drawing. Um, but I thought I'd show you this technique because it does save you quite a lot of time. So these are all the pan pastels I have. As I say, I don't use them all the time, so I've only got like a small collection of fairly neutral colours. And they're really good as well because they literally screw on top of each other, so they don't take up any storage whatsoever. So I'm going to take off the black at the top and just take off the lid. And you also want a plastic knife with like an oval sponge. I personally think that oval sponges are like the best one for getting in those details, making sure you can go right up to the edges. Um, you can get them in all different shapes though. Again, I've left the link to the pan pastels and the plastic knife with the sponges. So if you want to get prepared before you start this tutorial, um, then I've left both of the links to them in the description below. So basically what you want to do is, this is a very well used sponge, that's why it's already got pigment on the back of it, but you basically just want to dab the entirety of the back of the sponge, get that loose pigment on there, like that. Pan pastels are basically just really compressed, like loose pigment. When you apply it to paper in this sort of way, um, the layer is so, so thin that you can draw on top of it with coloured pencils and it'll literally just feel like you're working straight onto the paper. It doesn't feel like you're working on top of anything else. So obviously they're predominantly used for pastel pencils, but I think they work really well with coloured pencils as well and they also save you a bit of time. So what I'm going to do is apply this to the darkest parts of the badger basically where I can see like those darkest black areas so like on the inside of the ear on both sides and then just start to bring the remainder of that pigment down kind of around the eyes coming down those like two stripes down the face just use whatever's left on the back of your sponge and just drag that pigment down the face just to fill in that area You don't need to apply a hard pressure at all, just let the pigment sort of do its thing. Be careful when you're working around the eyes, you might want to use more of like the edge of the sponge, use it on its side slightly so you can be more accurate with where you're kind of applying that pigment.
I'm actually going to be doing this tutorial um, predominantly on drafting film. So once we've kind of mapped in this colour on the Fabriano paper, I'm going to layer a piece of drafting film over the top so we can just completely focus on those details. If drafting film is something that you've never used before, it's basically like um, basically like tracing paper, but a really like good quality one in a way. That's kind of what it feels like. Um, and basically like architects use it for getting those really fine detailed drawings. Um, so if you want in a really detailed, realistic piece, then definitely give the drafting film a try when we get to that stage. I only started using it about a year and a half ago, maybe, but I absolutely love it. I do probably about a third of my original work or tutorials as well on um, drafting film. I think it has so many benefits and it in a way kind of speeds your work up while still allowing you to achieve that really fine detail. So yeah, once we've done this, I'll explain more about drafting film and I'll kind of talk you through my process when working on that. So I've still not reloaded the back of my sponge. I'm still just spreading around that pigment that we initially put on. I'm also kind of applying this pan pastel in the same direction that the fur is going in as well. So it's kind of making its way down the face. So you want to apply it in that same sort of motion. I think it's so nice as well to have a bit of a contrast between, you know, really soft pan pastels and really tight detailed like parts of the colour pencil drawing. You can add a bit more round the eyes, just give it a bit more shadow around that area. Still not applied anything else, I'm just like moving my sponge to see where the majority of that pastel is.
So I've still got quite a lot of pan pastel on like the back end of my sponge. So I keep just tilting it and applying a bit more as and when I need it. So I'm going to leave the eyes as they are. You don't really want to work into the eyes because they're going to be, you know, like the most detailed part. I'm just going to reapply the pigment onto the back of the sponge just a little bit. Just tap it on lightly. And then I'm going to fill in the nose area. Using those initial outlines as a bit of a guide. I think pan pastels as well are mainly used on pastel matte paper, on the Clairefontaine pastel matte paper, because um, that's basically what it's made for. Really grips onto that pigment and it's really good for obviously pastel pencils. But I think this Fabriano paper has a really fine tooth, so it actually sits into the little grooves really nicely. and It just looks like immediately smooth. And then the body is kind of out of focus towards the back. So I'm just going to use what's left on my sponge and quite lightly just add a few sort of rough hair strokes that are going to act as like the hair tufts. And I think what I want to do with this piece is have it kind of fading out towards the ends. I don't want to draw right up to the edges. I want it to kind of fade out because there's a lot of black going on, like solid black especially underneath the face. Um, so I don't want it to be like, you know, a completely black portrait. I want it to be ma mainly focused on the face. So yeah, I think I'm gonna fade it off towards the bottom and at the sides. This is quite a nice opportunity as well to be quite loose um, with your drawing or with your <laughs> applying of the pigment. Um, because obviously with coloured pencils, if you want to draw realistically, everything takes quite a long time. You've got to be patient, really build up those layers. Um, and yeah, it's a nice, like I said before, it's just a nice contrast to have 
this soft sort of looseness against the um, you know really tight details of the colour pencils. So you just want to spread that pigment around and kind of fade it off towards the edges. Working up to that white fur on the edge of the face as well. I think if you kind of flick towards that section, leaving gaps in between, it shows that that white fur is above the rest of this black fur. It kind of gives that illusion. think if, as you keep just spreading around that pigment you know there'll be less and less on your sponge and then you can use that what's left to just blend out those edges and it'll be a bit more of a gradual fade off Try doing like small circular motions as well, just to get an even coverage. Just kind of blend out some of those marks. There's a tiny little white gap kind of between the nose and the bottom of the face. So you want to make sure you've got that gap in there. When it comes to the edges of the hairs, again, you just want to kind of flick out each of your applications of the pigment, really. Just keep the ends really soft and gradual. And it really does help us, even from this first initial stage, just to get that out of focus effect, because everything's so blended and soft and almost blurred. Um, that it's going to actually work in our favour when we start adding our coloured pencils in. I'm just going to move the camera down slightly so you can see what I'm working on on the lower half. So 
So I've sort of left like two centimetres from the bottom edge from when I'm fading out this pigment. I think especially with the black pan pastel, a little bit of pigment goes a long, long way. So you don't really need to keep applying and keep, you know, adding a lot. I think they're about eight pound to buy individually, something like that. So they're not the cheapest, but as you can see, they will literally last you for years and years and years. Um, so yeah, I've, like I say, I've only got a small selection, but the ones that I have got are like very neutral toned colors that I can use for pieces like this. And then I think I'm just going to add another tiny little bit on the back of my sponge and just apply this in those darkest areas. So like just underneath the face. And then start to kind of spread that round and down. Just going to apply a little bit more to the back of the sponge and just build up that darkness under the face or under the chin just a tiny bit more
So we can kind of see where the main parts of the badger are. Obviously it looks a bit weird at the minute because we've only added that one layer of pigment and just mapped out, you know, the basic shapes. I'm also going to add another pan pastel. This is going to be the shade Raw Umber Tint. This is like uh, probably the palest one that I've got. So I use it for like a base layer just to add a bit of definition and shadow into like that white, like lightest fur. And if you actually look, some parts of it are quite beige, they are quite cream. Um, so this is literally the perfect colour to use. So if you've only got one knife like I've got and you've run out of sponges, then just to keep everything clean, just rotate the sponge. So that black pigment is now on the opposite side, so it's not going to kind of contaminate what we're going to apply with this. This is actually fairly clean, although it doesn't look it, it's just very well used. So what you want to do is the same thing, get your raw on the tint, dab your sponge so that pigment covers the back of it. Also apply it to like the edges as well so you can be more specific with where you're applying that pigment. And then just want to lightly start working into that lighter fur mainly in those like neutral beigey cream areas. And remember, this is just gonna act as a base layer so you can be as like loose and kind of sketchy with it as you want to be. So as you can see that colour is so subtle, it's really good for white fur. I think I'm also just going to apply it to the ends of some of this body fur. Again, just to make it even more of a gradual fade off into the paper.
I'm also going to add a tiny bit of the raw umber, which is like a brown colour, and just add a tiny little bit to the nose. And anywhere else where you can see like subtle tints of brown. I'm also going to use the Burnt Sienna tint, which is another really pale, like neutral colour, using the same side because it's still quite a pale colour. And I'm just going to apply this just above the nose where we can see that little pinky area. Maybe slightly just underneath as well. And then again, just anywhere else maybe in the fur that you can see a little bit of a pinky colour. And then I'm going to use a mixture of two final pan pastel colours. One is the phthalo blue tint, if I've said that right, I'm not actually too sure. And one is the violet extra dark. Um, and if you look in the black fur, there is quite a lot of like purpley blue tones in there, kind of like an indigo. So using a mixture of both of these is just going to add that subtle tint in there as so I'm going to start by using the Thalo Blue Tint. I think, I think that's how you say it, but who knows? So I'm going to add a little bit of that on the back of my sponge and just work that into this black pigment that we've got down so far. I'd say the main area of blue is probably this section here on the right. So that's going to be mainly where I'm going to apply it. maybe a tiny little bit on the face as well in that darker fur. They blend together really, really easily as well, pan pastels, because the layers are so thin when you apply them. They just blend like an absolute dream. So I'm not even trying, I'm just laying one over the top of another. Add a little bit over here as well. Like that. And then you want to go in with your Violet Extra Dark and do the same sort of thing in the same areas, really. So something like that. Then if you think you've added a little bit too much, you could always go back in with that black pigment again, that black pan pastel, and just reapply a tiny, tiny little bit to the back of your sponge, literally just like that. And then just work over that area.
just using what's left on the sponge as well just to add a bit more around the eyes So yeah, I think I'm going to leave it like that with the pan pastel. So that's going to be like the first part of this tutorial. That's like the first step really in making it look realistic. Obviously it doesn't look realistic at all whatsoever right now. But we've got that really nice soft base layer. And we've also added some like really subtle undertones as well. Um, so what I'm going to do next in the next part is start talking more about drafting film. And I'm going to apply a layer of drafting film over the top. I've got mine cut out to size already. So literally just place it over the top like that. And like I said, how it's like tracing paper, you can literally see straight through it. So that's the point of doing those pan pastels beforehand. So we can still see all of that pigment underneath, but we can just go straight in with that detail and our colour pencils over the top. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed part one of this tutorial and it's been a little bit of something different for you. Um, I keep doing more and more of this sort of process and technique in my work. I think it starts off really quick and loose and then it ends up being really tight and detailed and realistic towards the end. So yeah, just stick with me and trust the process and we'll get there eventually. So yeah, please send me any um, updates of your work if you're working through this tutorial. I literally love seeing all your work so um, yeah tag me in your posts and send me messages of your work and stuff like that. If you want any help then please comment any questions below and I'll be happy to help you. Like I said at the start the line drawing the full materials list and the reference photo is in the video description below along with my link to Patreon if you want access to loads and loads of more animal based realistic colour pencil tutorials. Um, I, I also do like different techniques like this as well. It's not just completely colour pencils. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'll be back very shortly with part two.